Chad's army ruler on Friday visited a hospital and the protest hit district of the capital after a day of unprecedented violence that left around 50 people dead. Accompanied by his aides and hospital officials, Muhammad Idris B walked through the ward and held brief conversations with patients being treated for various injuries. Tensions eased on Friday after the ruling junta announced an overnight curfew on Thursday following fatal clashes earlier in the day between police and demonstrators. Most of the violence took place in Jamena's 7th district. The violence came on the heels of a national forum organized by DB that extended his military government's grip on power beyond Thursday's deadline. In power since April 2021, DB's junta had originally declared it would restore civilian rule after 18 months. But as the deadline neared, the nationwide forum staged by DB reset the clock. On October 1st, it approved a new 24-month time frame for holding elections. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands rallied across Ethiopia on Saturday to denounce what they termed as Western interference in their country's internal affairs. At this rally in Addis Ababa's Meskel Square, the protesters waved Ethiopian flags and carried placards supportive of the Federal Army's renewed offensive against rebels in the northern region of Tigray. What I want to convey to the West is that we want peace and love. We don't want anyone to die. All people are our people. We do not need anyone's interference. We can manage our country with our own sovereignty. Many people displayed banners urging the United States to stop supporting the Tigray People's Liberation Front, which has been locked in an armed conflict with Addis Ababa for nearly two years. To have a civilized country and people, we ask you to support development projects. Don't be a war sponsor. This is the voice of all Ethiopia. Government forces this week announced the capture of a string of rebel-held cities as calls for a ceasefire become louder. Guinea's junta has agreed to leave power after two years. Regional Block Echo was said Friday. The development means Guinea's army rulers are walking back their pledge to only hand over power to civilians after three years under intense regional pressure. In a statement Friday, ECOWAS said it had agreed a 24-month transition calendar with Conakry. The document does not specify when this 24-month period begins. Guinea's membership in ECOWAS remains suspended after a coup ousted Alpha Conde's government last September. The head of the junta, Kano Mamadi Dumbuya, had previously said he needed more time to carry out reforms necessary to make the country a democracy. But activists have accused him of seeking to rule indefinitely. In a meeting held on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in September, ECOWAS demanded that Guinea's rulers present a transition schedule in a month or suffer new sanctions. For more than two years, ECOWAS has seen a string of army takeovers in Burkina Faso, Guinea and Mali. Nigerian farmers say they are expecting poor harvest this year after heavier than average rains pummeled crops and brought widespread floods. The flooding is affecting most of Nigeria's states. Selina Gowan has been farming her five hectares of land in Abuja for over 20 years. This week she woke up to find her field flooded. The rain too much. As the rain too much. As so you come with the flood. Come divide the farm into two. Carry if you go behind that side, that across where it don't share into two. The flood affected rice that side, banana, my plantain, all don't go. Many consumers at this market complain of the rise in prices as well as the low quality of produce. The floods have blocked or washed away roads and transporting produce to markets now takes longer than usual. Everything is very expensive for us. Even food to eat, you know they're easy. Now make we go up and down to struggle to get what we go eat for our children. The farmers say 20% of their produce gets spoiled on the road. Some farmers have lost close to 75% of everything planted this year, according to the country's farmers' federation. From Edo to this side, I think we have to carry J5 then 110, 120, but as at, as at right now 140, 150 because of the flood. Nigeria has recorded at least 600 deaths with thousands of hectares of crop fields washed away.
South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, on Saturday accused his successor, Cyril Ramaphosa, of corruption. Zuma's claims follow a cash heist scandal at Ramaphosa's farm in which $4 million was allegedly stolen by robbers. The allegations could damage Ramaphosa ahead of a key party meeting in December. Conducted private business while holding the high office of president is nothing but corruption, which is inconsistent with the nature of that office and the constitution itself. Zuma himself is facing a litany of corruption charges. Ramaphosa has denied claims that he hid news of the robbery from the police and the tax authorities.